Good morning. This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on another muggy and miserable Florida Thursday. It, they're just not getting any better, and they're not going to get any better for a while. Uh, yeah, horrible humidity, insects, mist in the air, just dreadful, dreadful stuff that's going to stick with us for a while. A little bit of good news. I haven't seen any birds this morning. I haven't even heard one. Uh, they're probably sick to death of it all, and they've flown off to better places with less humidity and more cheerful surroundings. Who knows? Uh, either way, happy to not have any coming at me. And today, I've got this BMW. Um, all right, so this is a 2018 BMW X3 M40i. That's a little bit of a mouthful, and I have to say that BMW nomenclature and the nomenclature of the German cars in general is just getting kind of ridiculous. I mean, if you're going to have this many numbers and letters in succession, you might as well go back to names and have this called like the Elegante or the Sportatoris or something that, you know, can give you the badges you need in the back. I mean, having six or seven letters in a numeric, alphanumeric designation just seems like a bit much, but that's eh, what they do. Uh, anyway, this is the third generation X3. Uh, this one did come out in 2018, so this one's pretty fresh. Uh, the BMW very moderate and conservative with their X3 updating. Frankly, when I look at it, it doesn't look a whole lot different from the prior two generation. The grills are a little bigger and there's some other stuff, but uh, you know, the update has been very conservative for them. Uh, it's the G1 chassis number, uh, followed the F something, and uh, is part of that whole Klar's BMW design platform uh, that I think the 5 and the 7 share the same uh, basic uh, subframe, you know, all this aluminum bonded stuff, you know, all very nice and uh, a very dynamic platform that gives BMW a lot of different options in terms of engines and setups. It works pretty well for them. Uh, this one... Well, what can I say about it? I mean, you know, again, I'm not big into modern cars, I'm not big into SUVs, and I'm not big into BMW. So it's got three strikes going against it right from the beginning. Uh, but I have to say that this vehicle won me over a little bit. Uh, driving it around, it felt... You know, it felt like old BMW to me. And I don't mean like an old, tired, sad BMW like you see running around the streets of Miami. God, you see some shit boxes there. But uh, what I mean is what, you know, when you got in a BMW of 40, 30, 20 years ago, you'd sit in the uh, driver's seat. Everything was angled towards the driver. Everything felt nice. It fit like a glove. It just had this feeling of being a driver's machine. Uh, you felt a true connection with the vehicle that you were driving. At a certain point, BMW seemed to drift away from that. Uh, you became more detached. You became more uh, outside the car experience. And this thing, I have to say, in driving it for a couple of days, has uh, more reminisced me towards the towards the BMWs of old. It has a fantastic engine. It's a B58 engine. It also comes in the new Toyota Supra, by the way, which seems a bit strange to me. You think Toyota could have developed their own damn engine. Uh, it's a closed deck engine with a twin uh, twin scroll. Uh, we'll get into it in a minute. But anyway, the styling is quite nice. Uh, this one being an M performance model, it's got all kinds of Darth Vader helmet stuff with flares and scoops and uh, different little bits and pieces that make it look angry and aggressive and cruel, frankly. Uh, you know, I feel like this car would have been a prison guard of some type that just brutalized the inmates, but uh, or maybe the prison guard's kid. But anyway, it looks nice and uh, all very proper with the M package. Uh, you also get these nice big alloys, M Sport alloys. You've got some kind of blue calipers in the background. Uh, I think they're like 13.7 inch discs here, maybe bigger, uh, but uh, man, they do stop the car very nice. and. Uh, the M Sport stuff does add quite a bit of performance to the package, as well as price, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, very, very sinister looking thing with the shadow line trim, and uh, you got these black twice pipes at the back. There's your M badge with all the X3 M40i stuff. Uh, you got a tiny little wiper in the back. You got a rear uh, spoiler mounted at the top of the uh, uh, lift gate, and, eh, you know, it's a good looking piece, but we'll just get into it. There's our Bavarian flag on the BMW logo. 
you know, basically you're either a Mercedes guy or a BMW guy, which holds true in a lot of cases. You know, you're Saab or Volvo, you're Ford or Chevy, uh, you're Citroen or Peugeot. You know, you just have these things going that uh, make a difference. You, you pick one or the other and you go with it, uh, Democrat or Republican. Well, we won't get into that. Uh, here you can see it's got the all-weather mats back here. Plenty of room. You know, it is an SUV of sorts, so I think it better have some room. Uh, you'd be able to fit all kinds of toddlers back here. And uh, you've got uh, your infant retainment net, although it's going to be a pretty small infant. Uh, you may have to use these little bungee tie-downs to strap them down, but they're useful. You push a little button, slide them around, and you can tie your cargo down. Uh, underneath this, this is a pretty convenient place to put stuff. Uh, I've got uh, donuts for the guys. I've got my coronavirus whiskey and, uh, of course, my bag of crap. And this would be a fantastic place to put uh, all variety of weapons. You know, your Colt Pythons, your H&K, uh, you know, little mini submachine guns. All kinds of stuff is going to fit in there just fine. Uh, even got room for some nunchucks or, a, you know, kind of a short samurai sword or something. So uh, if you need to become a, you know, force of nature, you can have everything you need to do that right under this little panel here. Uh, also not a bad place to hide crap from the state troopers. Uh, it does have manual releases for the rear seats here, so if you pull these, uh, those rear seats will pop forward. Uh, it also does, of course, have a uh, cargo uh, cover, so, you know, if you're afraid the kids are going to be yelling, screaming, bouncing up and down, uh, you pull that thing out and it'll put a lid on them. All very nice stuff. And of course, all luxury cars now have to run the trunk or the deck lid for you, which this one does. Here's something a little bit weird that BMW started doing. Uh, instead of having a safety latch under the hood, uh, you have to pull the interior release and it beeps at you twice. And that releases the safety latch. I mean, if you're not familiar with that, good luck opening the hood on one of these. But anyway, there it is, the, uh, the B58, the twin scroll. Uh, turbocharger. What that does essentially is instead of just taking uh, exhaust from all of the different cylinders at once, it tunes them. So uh, it uh, injects the turbo in random sequence that uh, makes it more instantly boostable and uh, more efficient. So it's a great turbo. It nicely takes the place of a dual turbo system. Uh, you know, it's very advanced. Again, the closed deck, which means that the pistons aren't just standalone. They're very uh, well protected and secured up at the top near the head, which means you can heavily boost these engines if you want to. Uh, it's expensive, that's the only drawback, and uh, it does make an engine that lasts a long time and is very stable. Uh, it also has BMW's double Vanos, uh, you know, double top secret probation, uh, which is essentially just a modern version of the VVT technology that adjusts the valves to uh, be at peak efficiency, whether at idle or redline. So, uh, you know, typical BMW. BMW stuff, but I have to say that even with all the technology, uh, they have made this a terrific engine. And when it's in sport mode, it just farts and pops and bounces around. Uh, this was also in the M240i, which is a great uh, car for car guys. You know, that's as close as you're going to get to a modern E30 M3. Uh, pretty neat piece. And of course, the Supra. So, uh, you know, I have to say that in this class of micro SUV, eh, it's not even micro, it's kind of a mid small SUV. I mean, you've got the X1, the X3, the X5, the X7. So I guess this is towards the center. Whatever. Doesn't matter. But uh, it's, a, it's a terrific engine. Maybe the best engine in class. Uh, it turns in certainly the fastest uh, time in its class, with the exception of the McCann GTS, which beats it by a tenth of a second. Uh, otherwise, this thing is quicker than the Audi uh, or the Mercedes AMG that it competes with uh, significantly, despite maybe having a little less power. Uh, BMW just does it that well. So kudos to the guys on that one. Uh, it's connected to what people love, this 8-speed Z automatic that again you know you can treat like a DCT downshift popping this that the other maybe it is a DCT for all I know dual clutch uh, either way it's a great little transmission uh, despite uh, my opinion that it has too many forward gears I'd rather have like a power glide give me a two-speed automatic and I'm happier I don't need eight friggin speeds Anyway, it's all very nice and proper under there. I have to say, I used to complain about our detailer. I see we have some leaves under the hood of this one. Uh, I, you know, maybe he was, well, you know what? He was bad, but maybe not as bad. So, anyway, we'll see.
yeah, that didn't work. I don't really understand that. I think the hood should close a little bit better in this thing. You shouldn't have to give it too much thought, but you know, that's the problem with a really light hood. It's probably aluminum with double big latches, and there we go. Anyway, all right, back seats, all very nice, leather, lovely, like the uh, blue piping, the blue stitching on it. Uh, you know, I looked it up in the way, it has some sort of Italian name, the leather, who gives a crap, Cavaccia or something. It's nice leather, and I like the way they've stitched it together. You got these little headrests, you've got a center console you can pop out that gives you a couple of cup holders, but absolutely zero gun storage. So uh, forget about being a head of a crime syndicate and riding in the back of this thing, unless you want to tuck your weapon into these nets here, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, it's just not elegant. I mean, you could do it. You could stick all kinds of guns and nets and pockets and things here, but, eh, you know, it just doesn't look very elegant to do so, so probably going to have to keep with the S's or the big Audis or something. But anyway, everything very lovely and proper in the back seat. Uh, the mirrors fold in when you lock it. This has comfort access, so I can lock it by kind of pinching the door handle there. You see the mirrors fold in. Uh, it'll open up if I just put my hand on it and give it a tug. Uh, front seats, these are the sport seats, uh, which I don't even think are standard in this M Performance model. I think you got to opt for them, but could be wrong. Uh, either way, very supportive, very nice, very, uh, you know, sports car-ish without being too uh, hard on the spine. They're, they're just lovely, lovely seats. Uh, there's like two or three different finishes you can have for the trim. Uh, this one has uh, some sort of alumini crosshatch looking stuff. You can see the little mood lighting that goes around it. Uh, you know, again, all very lovely, nice fit and finish. Uh, you know, the X3, <coughs> essentially an entry level SUV of sorts, although this one's in the mid to high 60 grand range, so I don't know how entry level that is anymore. Uh, but uh, either way, they've really upped the luxury and the feel of the fit and finish in these things. Uh, there you see a nice big M40i uh, badge as you get in to remind you that you spent extra money and have a bigger payment than you might have before. Uh, also a pano roof in this thing, so uh, has a big shade cover you can pull closed and then you can open that thing if you need it. And uh, that will certainly let in the sun as you're driving around. It's welcoming me. I'm driver one, BMW driver one. I imagine that's customizable, so it could say my name. Uh, I, <laughs> I won't get into, oh God, I gotta be careful what I say. All right, so foot on the brake, I'm gonna tap this guy. It's gonna fire to life with a little growl. It really gives you a nice little growl, this car beeps at you because I don't have my seatbelt on. They give you this. I feel like BMW could have made these keys smaller, and I give that criticism to just about every company now. The keys are enormous. Uh, you slide this plastic-looking thing forward. It's got a little slot there where you can stick it and then close it again. Uh, all very nice stuff. Get my seatbelt on, and then we'll go through some of this technology crap. And again, this is usually the kind of stuff that I don't like in cars. All the uh, heavy-duty, you know, snowflake tech crap. But I have to admit, I've kind of enjoyed it in this car. Uh, here you see a customizable uh, digital slash analog instrument cluster. A little bit busy, but I think, again, the youngsters are going to like it. Uh, you've got automatic headlights over there, fog lights, parking lights. You've got a heads-up display. Uh, there you can see that. Gives you different bits of information. It's customizable. Uh, you've got this 12.3 inch screen uh, that goes through all the different BMW apps. What do we got here? Media, radio. I think we can go right back into my Apple CarPlay, which is nice. We can. So there's all my crap. What do we got? Tom Waits. Great guy independently creepy, sometimes, you know, uh, well, whatever. Anyway, if you like Tom Waits, you like Tom Waits. So it gives you Apple CarPlay. BMW has come down very strongly on the side of Apple. Uh, they don't offer an Android CarPlay in this thing, which is kind of fascinating. So, uh, you know, I've, I, there's something about phones brings out the worst in people. And frankly, I, I blame Android people more. You know, I've had an iPhone for years because, frankly, it doesn't matter. It's what the, the phone company basically gave me. And somebody who has some modern new Android phone will come up to me or Google phone and say, oh, that, that Apple phone's a piece of shit. You know, you need to get this 
Super Galaxy 51240E. And, uh, you know, I, nobody, who, who cares? It's just this talking machine that sits in your pocket and you use it to call people up. Unless they're snowflakes, then you have to text them. But, uh, you know, I can't imagine why people uh, get so angry and into the phone thing. But anyway, Apple seems to have come down on the side of, or sorry, BMW's come down on the side of Apple. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, using this iDrive thing that's been updated since the days it confused old people. Uh, it's become a lot easier. And you can get into your different stuff. So you've got your media, satellite radios, music collections, uh, you know, all that kind of crap that nobody cares about. Uh, connect a drive that apparently will give you the weather. Let's see if we get the news. What's going on with the news today? Apparently it's a bad idea to store fertilizer in Beirut. That's some of the news that I've heard about. Category top news. Trump is bad. Hookers for Jesus. I love it. I love it. You know, if Trump is going to fund anything, I think it should be hookers for Jesus. Absolutely. Uh, Beirut reels. Biden says Trump's China deal. Biden, you know, who that? How even knows? Anyway, never mind, Joe Biden. You've got to be fucking kidding me. What the fuck did they dig that guy out of? Uh, but anyway, there's all our news and what have you. Weather makes more sense to me. Uh, it's going to come up and say hot. Uh, when you see 89 rubbish, that's like 99. This is 101. Uh, the humidity just amplifies all of that crap. Anyway, back to CarPlay. Let's just go on. There's your navigation. You know how that works. Here's your uh, communication. This is your, you know, whatever. There's my iPhone. You get into my vehicle. Uh, you can change your iDrive settings, your driver. Pro this is probably where we can name it. So uh, if I wanted to be Decatron, that's how I could name it, I'm sure. And uh, whatever, I technology in action, driving information, whatever. All right, let's go over to notifications. This is where you would get into all your TikToks and Instagrams. And let's see, we got BMW Assist personalized menu. I found this earlier. I'd like to find it again if I can. Navigate, connect, drive. Let's see if it's here in news. Yeah, Wiki, Local, Yelp, Flickr, Park Now, BMW Info, TikTok, Instagram, all the crap snowflakes need to keep themselves happy. Uh, all very fancy stuff. Uh, you also get a pretty snazzy camera. So let's see that here. So there we go. We've got a top view. We've got a, uh, a back view. Uh, you can spin your thing around here to get different uh, look at this. I'm looking at myself. If I could actually see myself in the thing, I'd give myself the finger. <laughs> you can spin around the camera and see. I mean, I don't know who would have time for this. I mean, it's a safety device, and I'm going to use it in such a way that makes me crash. I promise. I mean, I could just play with that for a while, and it's absolutely meaningless to me. I'm sure some people like it. Uh, if I press this thing with the green around it, I could get into the configuring what the intelligent safety so let's see what I can, all on. I'm just gonna do all on. What does that do? Configure individual. Gives you a pedestrian warning. Remember that was that, look at that kid coming out with the soccer ball, you're gonna mow him down. Mow him. Somebody said in the comment section, how many animals have you run over or killed today? I mean, look, I'm not a big fan of wildlife, okay? Obviously, I love dogs, I have two of them, but I'm not going around killing animals for God's sake. And maiming, wounding, fine, maybe, but I'm not going to kill the damn things. Uh, anyway, uh, what else have we got here? That was the safety stuff. You know, your blind spots, your lane assists, all that crap. Uh, you've got direct access buttons, which kind of uh, make it easier. You've also got a great little voice command here, which works well, I have to say. So let's see, I press it. Navigation. Navigation. Look at that. All right, I'm going to press it again here. Let's see what else we got. Heads up display. Head up display. Look at that. Continue using manual control. I will continue using that. Thank you. Uh, very intelligent voice activated system. Somehow cloud based and apparently you can speak to it in English. So let's try this one. Hold on. Play Shout at the Devil by Motley Crue. Let's rock out. What music would you like to hear? Oh, yeah, great. Okay, very helpful there, um, you know, BMW. I bet I can do that with, uh, I bet I can do that with CarPlay. Hang on. I have Alexa in my, uh, uh, oh, wait, where the hell am I going here? I have Alexa in my pickup truck, which works for, we'll do you and me. We'll do a little Alice Cooper. There we go. Nice little goof song. 
Uh, but anyway, there it is. So you got all this stuff, which it's going to take you time to learn and play with, but it is great fun in its own stupid way, uh, even if it distracts you to the point of crashing into somebody. Uh, you've got a nice little rear view mirror. I've noticed lately that uh, car companies are sort of spacing it out, so we've gone back to the 50s where there's no frames around the mirror. You got all this piano black trim. Here's your pano roof that you can open, all very nice stuff. Close that again very quickly when we get the air going. Uh, you got your front and rear seats. You got a big M Power logo in front of the thing where you get your cup holders and all that. Uh, yeah, I'm not a giant fan of this shifter. BMW loves their hyper electronic Starship Enterprise looking shifters. Uh, you have to pinch the side to move it. Reverse being forward seems a little bit strange. Uh, drive being backward, yeah, that's fine. You go over to the left, you start to get into manual or sport mode. Uh, I press this, we're in what, sport plus, you got the car running at you. Uh, look at the way it changes, I'll go back to Eco Pro, but here's how it changes the uh, instrument cluster. So I go into sport, which also, by the way, changes the uh, tone of the exhaust note and sort of starts uh, popping and farting when you're downshifting. So uh, I love leaving it in sport. That's probably what I would do. Uh, you see auto H, that means auto hold. That's that button there that's illuminated. That means I can take my foot off the brake and it's still gonna hold us here. Uh, turn off the parking brake or no, that's just part of it, so. Anyway, all very nifty stuff. Uh, you've got your camera button here. You've got your hill descent. Uh, this is all-wheel drive. You can turn off your traction control. Uh, this will do a launch control if you want. You can race the Mustang GT next to you. Zero to 60 in like 4.6 or 4.8 or something. Very quick car. Uh, and of course, a uh, little spot here to put some. You have a pretty good size gun in there. So I guess this is good for the daughter of the uh, crime syndicate guy. She can keep her weapon handy. All right, so we're in uh, in drive. Let's go for a spin. I like the sort of um, I'll turn Alice down. Uh, I like the uh, sort of wonky looking hood with all the swoops and flares, and you know it kind of makes you. Um, I don't know, feel like you're in something sporty. Uh, now here's the part that I get into that I don't really like, or at least uh, I historically don't like. Uh, this car has done what BMW, it, it just feels like anathema to me. The steering is electric and sort of steer by wire. It actually has park assist, by the way. So if you're parallel parking, you do a couple little routines and the thing will turn the wheel for you uh, and park for you. And of course, to have that kind of technology, it means that you know, the days of when your steering directly moved the front wheel without any assist from anything are over. I mean, this thing is all just simulated. I feel the steering wheel tightened up on me, which is weird. Um, you know, it's, it's just so, well, here we go. <laughs> okay, so that makes me giggle. And that's pretty good. Uh, you know, that is the saving grace of this car for me, is it's fast as shit. I mean, uh, you get all this great sound out of that 355 horse engine. Uh, the exhaust is just popping and, see if I slow down, if it pops on me. Yeah, you hear downshift and gurgling and burbling. Uh, all very cool stuff. Uh, the heads up display, displaying, you know, very fast increments towards 60 and quarter mile. You know, okay, thank you, BMW. You've taken a pedestrian little SUV and you've given it a drivetrain that makes me giggle. And uh, that's good enough. These, oh God, these aren't the kids who had that giant mini pig. No, they're not. I, uh, we're all friendly and happy here. Yeah, love children. They're so happy you populating the world with your little spawn. Anyway, um, so there, there it is. I mean, it's it's sort of a nondescript little SUV that I'm not inclined to like, but they put a drivetrain in it that makes me giggle like a schoolgirl. It's fantastic. And I have thoroughly enjoyed, uh, you know, driving it around for that reason. Uh, the downshifting. I always leave it in sport mode. I'll say that for sure. Let's make sure we're in it again. I turn trash control off, but there's no point. I gotta go where there's some kind of curves or something. I'm sure it handles very well and all that stuff. But all right, hammer. Awesome. I mean, 
mean, it just gives you the boost and the torque straight off the bat, flies down the road. The steering, eh, you know, I can tell it's artificial. They've done a nice job of mimicking whatever you might want, but in sport mode, it's heavy. Uh, it reduces the steering uh, lock to lock by like 25%, so, you know, you get greater input from smaller moves, but, um, you know, you can just tell it's artificial. You really can. There's just never going to be a substitute for having true connected steering. I'm sure brakes are by wire and uh, everything else is just by wire. Don't care how good they get at it. You know, you're going to need Picasso to make it feel like, uh, you know, the old days in a, an old Spitfire or something where you were directly connected to the wheels and brakes. But it's good enough, and I'm sure it's exactly what most of the market for this car wants anyway. I mean, they didn't get raised on uh, very analog cars. You know, the, the more digital, the better for, for most of the purple hair snowflake types and and uh, maybe some of the middle-aged guys, too. Uh, you know, your blind spots, your lane assists, your, eh, whatever, all that crap that people like. And uh, all in all, it's, you know, it's a, I have to say, it's a pretty good driving experience. Much better than I thought when I first laid eyes on it. So, uh, there it is, 2018 BMW M40i. Uh, this one, again, facilitated by Auto House in Naples. It's an Auto House in Naples car. It's for sale on the lot. Uh, if you go to autohousenaples.com, we should have it listed by later today. You know, beautiful piece, one owner, low miles, no stories. Uh, sapphire black, brilliant black, whatever they call it. Lots of option packages on it. And uh, it's, uh, you know, if you want one of these things, it's the one you want. So thank you very much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care. All right, we're going to try this active parking assist thing. We've got this uh, old Toyota FJ and Peter's insane Hagman tracked vehicle. So uh, to do this, we're in drive. I'm going to press this P button, which I think is going to give us active parking assist. And we're going to look for it. Oh, please stop the vehicle. All right, to park, activate, turn signal. Please select, uh, what do we want, perpendicular or parallel? We're going to go with parallel. All right, I remain personally responsible. I guess so, okay. I'm good. Hold down the parking button, hands off the steering wheel. All right, so I'm going to keep that pressed. I've got my foot off the brake. I'm not touching the wheel, and it's really creeping me the hell out by turning itself. With the world's loudest turn. That's close. Wow. God, this is a ballsy parking feature. So there it is. Now it's turning it again, Knight Rider style. And there it is. So if I'm a crap parallel parker, uh, this BMW is going to park itself for me. Love it. <laughs> All right, there it is. Thanks again. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.